in the fall of 1994, my fiance and I moved down to an old farmhouse in Oregon on property that was has been in my family for four generations. I live in northeastern Utah. It's a great place to live because it has national forest on one side and BLM property on the other side, so you have a lot of recreation. And that's what we enjoy is camping, hunting, fishing, and riding our ATVs. Took our two big dogs with us and um, we, we understood clearly that it was sheep country and free running dogs would be likely shot by farmers. In the year 2003, we were riding our ATV south of town and we stopped to look for rocks and shells and different things. And I seen something off to the side that kind of took my eye, so I walked over there to, to see what it was and it looked like an old surveyor's marker. We just crossed a stream and our big dog Ruby, who is a huge mastiff shepherd blend and weighed more than I did, um, all of a sudden she was walking along and then she fell over on her side and was kicking and... I couldn't read it so I was took my hand and, and brushed across it to get the dust off and when I did that it fell over. It exploded and hit me in the chest. It put an orange powder all over my face and my clothing. I'm trying to figure out what to do. There was this terrible smell, really strong metallic smell coming from her foaming mouth and I leaned down and kept smelling it in thinking I need to be able to describe this to a vet or a poison specialist to know what it is and it didn't occur to me at the time that it was poison gas. I was kind of in shock for a while but we got kind of squared away there and then I started wiping the powder off my face and it was got a little in my mouth, it was a real bitter taste and, and it made me sick, instantly sick. And we got her loaded in the car and started driving as fast as we could to get back to the farmhouse to call 911. And I started to um, pass out. I was trying to clear her windpipe. I thought maybe in addition to poison, she was choking on something. So I reached in her mouth and right then she gave a huge convulsion and clamped down on my hand, which I didn't think about at the time. After we realized she was dead, we walked to the stream and we're washing our hands just in shock. And that's when Michael saw the blood on my hands and we both realized that um, we didn't know how the poison worked and that we were in the middle of nowhere. Um, as huge, powerful dog had just died horribly and, um, and I'd been bitten and that whatever poison was probably in my system at that point as well. I was uh, out of work for two weeks and sick all that time and I, I was 62 at the time so I, I took an early retirement because this cyanide had entered my bloodstream and when it enters your your bloodstream it hooks to your iron in your system and deletes the 
the oxygen out of there. I haven't been camping very much or anything because it, it it's just puts the fear into you because these cyanide bum, bombs the the government trapper puts them out there it's it's like loading a pistol and cocking it and laying it down hoping that the right person or, or the right critter will come by and get shot by it and it's totally insane if I left a loaded pistol on my dresser hoping as a crook come in and hoping that they would find the gun and shoot theirself it that's about makes as much sense to me down there on my land in such a beautiful place and have something so violent happen because of such an irresponsible agency. just a real hazard and a danger to people and animals because any kind of animal or small child or, or anybody that gets caught with these cyanide guns could get killed and I'm just lucky to be alive today.